We are living a very uh, difficult situation, special for the elder and for the young people, especially those with uh, degrees, with master degrees. Uh, there's a sense of no future. Uh, the social crisis is increasing. We need to be aware that um, Spain always had very high levels of unemployment in the last 20, 30 years. Portugal never had 16% of unemployment. So we had between four and eight, that was the range of unemployment. So we are very much concerned that uh, an employment of 16 and maybe reaching 18% within months, uh, we are concerned with how it will affect the social structure of Portugal. And uh, therefore we are for that a little bit afraid on the consequences of these policies, especially because none of it, neither Troika or the government, never predicted that we would have this kind of unemployment. So unemployment is the number one uh, concern. It's a very uh, uh, strong uh, uh, rising uh, uh, unemployment, also because a huge part of it, so we are talking uh, around one million people, uh, and also because uh, uh, almost a third of this are already without any kind of social assistance, uh, of any kind of payment from the social security. So the whole system is collapsing a little bit. Uh, of course, many are also choosing to go away from the country. Uh, over 100,000 already left the country in the last 18 months. Well, it's, a, it's a huge number. Actually, I said chose to leave, I, I should say were forced to leave. Because to be honest, if there is the possibility of choice, it's, if it's a free choice, that's fine. The problem is that they are being forced because there are no perspectives, no future. The government itself makes the speech of immigration, saying that it's a good thing and that they should go away. Mainly the government is, as we usually say, going beyond Troika. You know what we mean by Troika. Uh, ECB, European Commission and IMF, the program that we also call Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, there was an agreement uh, around that memorandum, um, a social and political consensus to fulfill the objectives of the memorandum. Uh, but the government chose to go beyond. So they used the memorandum as, a, as an excuse to basically implement an ideological, very radical ideological agenda uh, of uh, um, reducing the weight of the state in many sectors, especially the social sectors on healthcare, on education and social security. So as we see it, they are using the memorandum and this opportunity of crisis to reduce as much as they can the weight of the social uh, uh, welfare state uh, that uh, it took so many time, so many years to build. It's not a coincidence, not at all. Uh, I would add to what you said uh, uh, to say that uh, we need to, to see that for the last six, seven years, Europe has been ruled by center-right liberal governments, uh, either on the European level, at the European Commission, uh, at the European Parliament, the President of the Council, uh, the council itself, because the majority of the governments are right-wing and liberal, and the main economies were ruled by uh, center-right, right, right uh, uh, liberal governments in the Eurozone. Uh, paradoxic paradoxically, uh, the governments, the countries that were not ruled by those kind of, by that fam uh, political family, were the ones to be attacked first. That for me probably it's not a coincidence, it's a very strange coincidence. Spain had a socialist government, Portugal has a socialist government, so these were the countries first to be uh, under crisis, which is a huge coincidence. Um, so there is an approach, an ideological and political approach to what should be the Eurozone, the economies on the Eurozone. And also the, there is this idea from Germany um, that uh, we should increase competitive, co competitive 
competitivity and productiveness, and of course we all agree on that. The problem is that Germany did it along 10 years. And at the same time, each country was by itself. We had one fiscal policy, or better said, we had one monetary policy and 17 fiscal policies. So we had a problem of architecture of the Eurozone. Things were not balanced. Uh, there was no political coordination, no fiscal coordination, and each country was uh, by itself managing its country without being aware of the, some of the consequences that some decisions would have in the whole of the Eurozone. So I would say, first of all, that we need first to see there is the Eurozone, the architecture of the Eurozone, the challenges of the Eurozone. Everybody made mistakes on seeing how we should live and govern within the Eurozone. But the main responsibilities, in uh, my opinion, are uh, from the main economies and the center right that ruled Europe. Um, for uh, uh, a number uh, of years, and then we had the financial crisis. 